Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Independent MHA Paul Lane is looking for an audit of Nalcor and to find out why he thinks that the Auditor General needs to audit Nalcor. Paul Lane joins me now in studio. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. It's great to have you back. Uh, so you initially wrote the Premier back in July uh, requesting an audit of Nalcor, but since then uh, you have found out that uh, they don't necessarily need a directive from government to do so. But I guess, you know, what was the initial uh, reasoning for you to request an audit? Well, there are many reasons why I've requested an audit. I guess the, uh, uh, I guess the overarching reason is that I believe that people of Newfoundland and Labrador have totally lost confidence and faith in Nalcor. Uh, an entity which, uh, you know, we are the only shareholder. We own it 100%. And uh, certainly if you look at all of the things that have uh, occurred, uh, you know, over the last uh, year or so, uh, you know, things such as Dark NL, uh, the, uh, you know, the fact that uh, after Hydro couldn't even keep the lights on, uh, they still paid out all of their executive uh, bonuses. Uh, you know, the fact that the Liberty Report came out First was the, I guess the, the first Liberty report came out and indicated that the reason why they couldn't keep the lights on is that they weren't even doing basic maintenance uh, on the equipment in Holyrood, which should be a red flag in itself. Uh, and of course, we've had a new, uh, another Liberty report, a second report that's come out more recently that's indicated that, uh, you know, even after Muskrat Falls is, uh, is built and is online, that we still run the risk of another dark NL occurring. Uh, you know, we've had the issues, of course, with uh, the, the CEO and his departure, all the controversy around, around that. Uh, we've had um, the board of directors, of course, and the chair of the board who left and, uh, you know, before he left had raised allegations of uh, conflict of, of interest. Uh, that was obviously another red flag. And, uh, you know, the list goes on. We have Muskrat Falls now with all the overruns, all of the project delays. So if there was ever a time, I think, to bring the Auditor General in, it's certainly now to restore that confidence. And so there was, uh, there was an article in the Telegram mm -hmm. by James McLeod, and he was asking the Auditor General about, uh, you know, I guess, thoughts on a possible audit. And he said that he wasn't going to, uh, I guess, essentially commit to one at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you take away from that, from that response? Well, I was obviously very disappointed uh, to hear that, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, the Auditor General, no different than uh, myself or the Premier of the government, the Auditor General works for the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. His salary is paid by the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. His office, his staff, all paid for by the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, as I indicated, NELCOR is owned 100% by the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. If we have concerns, and I believe he has an obligation, uh, to look into those concerns on behalf of the people who are, is employing him and his staff and his office. So I was very, uh, I guess, disappointed to hear that statement. Uh, so that's why I have continued to encourage all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to continue to email the Auditor General at his office and, uh, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, originally I told him to request, I asked people to request that he do this audit. Now I'm asking people to put in a little bit more firmer language that we are demanding an audit of, of Nelcor, and he worked for us, and we, we expect that he would do that audit. So when you think of the audit, what exactly would you be looking for and, and looking for him to really look into? Well, you know, there are a number of, as I said, there are a number of issues. Uh, certainly when we look at, uh, you know, uh, Derek NL, the Liberty Report that showed uh, that they weren't doing basic maintenance, uh, my first thought just looking at it when it first happened, and, and I, like many people, were very upset. I thought that I would have heard of pink slips being handed out. Instead, I heard of corporate bonuses uh, being paid out. Um, and uh, at the time, as I recall, I can remember the CEO, when he was asked about it, he basically said, well, we have a good safety record, and there was a couple of other things, which I thought was absolutely uh, you know, a ridiculous answer, to be quite honest with you. Uh, so you know, I have concerns about you know, uh, why wasn't the maintenance done? Who was responsible for, being, for, for doing the maintenance and why didn't they do it? Was there direct directives given from the board or from the CEO? Was the directives given from the, the, the minister of the day telling them not to do the maintenance? Like these are questions we need answered. Uh, these allegations, as I said, of conflict of interest, that's a very big concern for me. Uh, first of all, I think that that allegation certainly needs to be looked into, 
But secondly, if you recall the story that was in the media and the emails that were released, the, uh, the uh, chair of the board at the time was talking about conflicts that had occurred perhaps a year or two or three, whatever it was, previous to that, and he said that he was confident there was a conflict. Well, if he was conf confident that a conflict had existed two or three years ago, why didn't he raise it two or three years ago? Why wasn't it a concern then? Why was it only a concern at the time that they decided that they were going to, I think the terminology was, load their guns or get some ammunition to go to war with government? And so if that, if that conflict allegedly exists, could there be other conflicts that, 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 that possibly could exist? You know, again, we look at all the overruns and contract delays and so on at Muskrat, and you know, I hear all kinds of horror stories from people about what's going on there or what's not going on there and, and all kinds of allegations of, you know, things going on that perhaps shouldn't be done in a certain way. These are all concerns that I have. These are concerns that the people have, and that's why we need to have the audit done. When you talk about the people, I'm curious as to the feedback that you've received from the general public, from your constituents. Uh, I've received tremendous feedback. Um, are people on board with this uh, in terms of an audit, or do you think people are kind of, in a, in a way, kind of just sick of hearing about Muskrat Falls? Well, and, and, and you know, I, I think to some degree, it's like anything, you know. Uh, people are busy, and people go about their daily lives, you know, uh, trying to, you know, get up, go to work, do their job, get their kids to school, deal with daycare, deal with day-to-day -day life, deal with paying the bills, which of course is a lot harder these days since that horrible budget that came down, and we could have a whole other show talking about that. Uh, but, you know, so not everybody is necessarily in tune with it, and certainly people, you know, uh, but, but there are an awful lot of people who are, and I have been contacted by numerous people and encouraged by numerous people to continue uh, bringing this issue forward, to continue, uh, you know, uh, asking whether it be the Premier or the Auditor General, both, to let's get the books open, let's look at now for, and, uh, and I know for a fact, because I've been copied on uh, numerous uh, emails and stuff that have been sent, I've received a lot of messages from people who have told me that they have indeed gone and contacted the Auditor General and asked for the audit. So, yes, I believe there's a lot of people concerned, there's a lot of people that want it done. I can't tell you how many or any specific, you know, uh, numbers, but, um, you know, I believe that there is an awful lot of people. Okay, we just have 30 seconds left, but I sure. want to ask you, uh, you know, sent a letter to the Premier in July. Have you heard from him since that time I regarding have, this? No, I have not heard uh, a peep out of the Premier, uh, quite frankly, on, uh, on that letter, which, again, is very disappointing. Given the fact, uh, and it's interesting because given the fact that it was a previous administration that had actually set up NELCOR, appointed uh, the, the boards that were there, sanctioned Muskrat and everything else, you would think that this new administration would be anxious to open the books and, and let the people find out what's going on. But for some strange reason, which I can't answer, that does not appear to be the case, and I, I'd certainly like for people to ask the Premier why that is. Okay, Mr. Lane, we'll have to leave it there. We were going to bring up d uh, democratic reform, <laughs> but of course this took up the bulk of the conversation. Yep. Thanks very much for your time here today. It's my pleasure. All right, folks, we're going to take a very short break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media.